Well, let's switch gears a little bit, talk yeah. about cancer treatments. Um, the approach you think should be different for each person, right? And when mm. a lot of us go to the doctor, it's okay, let's, we're gonna start with the old standby, whether it's chemo or radiation, yeah. And, yeah. and they try these approaches, you know, one after the other, but it really needs to be different for each person, do you think? It absolutely does. And, you know, the standard of care is based on statistics. And again, when you have your bell-shaped curve, the folks right in the center of that, about 30% may have a good response to those therapies, but the outliers will either have no response or an like overzealous response. Like it's, it's either or, you know, like completely on or completely off. Because we have people who push back cancer beautifully, but they die in the process. Mm -hmm. So they die without tumors, but they die from all the secondary effects of the, of the treatment. Mm -hmm. We also have patients who have particular, like they just don't respond at all to those therapies. Nothing happens, good or bad. It's just kind of, you know, standard. So we don't spend enough time asking why and trying to uh, look under the hood to figure out what makes that person different than the standard. So in the approach that I take, we're able to explore more specifically, it's not even about don't do conventional standard of care therapies, but let's enhance your ability to be in the center of that bell-shaped curve. So, you know, it's funny, 10 years ago, everyone came to me was 100% on standard of care and simply wanted me to help them clean up the mess afterwards, okay? Then it started switching up people saying, I'd like some support while I'm going through the therapy. And now I have people saying, I'd like to even see if that therapy is appropriate for me. That's in a matter of two decades, two and a half decades. That's pretty cool that the people who are making the change in this are not the doctors or the researchers, it's the patients who are starting to recognize when they are watching people sitting around the room getting their chemotherapy, why does that person look better than that person? And why does that person look like they're gonna jump off a cliff? And why do I look and feel this way? They're watching their peers going through this. And they're sitting there like, when I've met nurses who work in um, uh, IV chemo rooms, they say to me all the time, the nurses say, I know who's seeing you and who isn't. It's really clear. And then the other people start to watch and be like, why is she not losing all of her hair? Or why are they not puking their guts out? Or why do they come in whistling Dixie, you know, when they sit down in the chair? Um, it doesn't have to be an either or, and it can definitely be enhanced. And doing that, it takes a little bit of detective work to find out what makes that person tick mm -hmm. and what helps them overcome this process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you see that shift in patients, do you envision a time where more traditional doctors will see that shift as well and say, okay, mm -hmm. let's do this, but I think you should also go and either see this person or yeah. you know, add this therapy as well. It's funny, would, if you would have asked me this 10 years ago, I would have said, it's never gonna happen. There'll be a snowball's mm -hmm. chance, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but there is such a difference in the last two, three years. I think, I think part of that is because of I mean, as much as love it or hate it, social media, mm -hmm. um, there's been such great access to people who are sharing their own experience of overcoming terrible experiences, such as Kelly Turner's book, Radical Remission, is such a good example. A, a researcher, a sociologist who worked in a, in a cancer center who started to hear stories of radical remissions, you know, spontaneous remissions, mm -hmm. and she started to do her homework. She would ask around, the doctors didn't know what to tell her, and she started following the thousand case reports that she found followed those, found those people, asked them questions, and out of that came her book of the nine factors that lead to a radical remittive state of people who otherwise wouldn't have been here today and didn't do it sure. with a conventional intervention. And she found these kind of common threads. So since then, she has collected hundreds of thousands of stories of this. And so when folks also recognize that there are, there's hope, there's ways to do it differently, there's ways not to be the statistic, there's ways to do it better, not instead of, but in addition to, that's happened. And when these patients read this, they come back to their doctors and say, well, what else can I be doing? These are the common denominators of quote unquote spontaneous remitters. What can you offer me to help me increase my chances to be one of those people? Mm -hmm. So the doctors are needing to step up and ask those questions. So probably in the last two or three years, I do. I spend my Wednesdays just doing doctor consultations. Of them, of, and we're talking almost all of them are conventional um, oncologists that are reaching out saying, I want to understand why my patient that's seeing you is doing better than my patients that aren't. That I never thought would happen. And what they realize very quickly and what I hope to convey in the book and the talks that I do, 
I think people think going to a naturopathic doctor that I'm gonna say, oh, never chemo, never surgery, never radiation. But I'm like, well, how can we make these work? Oh, first of all, are they appropriate? Great, if they are, what, which one we can decide specifically? We don't have to guess mm -hmm. at all anymore. We can test and know precisely what is the best path. So when these doctors start to look at my reports with clients, they realize it's based in sound evidence and I'm looking for metrics to help them determine the best path. So I'm helping the doctor help the patient and I'm helping the patient help the doctor. You know, I'm kind of the bridge, mm -hmm. I suppose, in this, like, <laughs> kumbaya. Um, but that's how it, I feel like it may be another decade away from it being a little more standard, but it's popping up in little um, sprouts all over the world, not mm -hmm. just my own community or the country. It's, it's becoming global.